let's mute our phones. <laughs> That's everyone in the waiting room is in. Welcome, everyone. Before we get started, I would like to get everyone to come up with at least two questions. And you're going to take those two questions and direct message them to Miss Angel Perry. So when we get to the Q&A portion, we've got some cues to A. Mm -hmm. At least two Every questions. So everyone, welcome to our Down Payment Assistance Program's Home Buyer Seminar. I am the man, Mr. Langston Ellington. We've got the angelic Angel Perry and the ferocious Lady Gamboa. She is a loan officer. Miss Angel Perry is a realtor, and I myself am a, real, am a realtor. Today, we are going to be covering three big things. One, the basic steps for home ownership. This just the broad strokes of what everyone should know. The cost of buying a home. And we're going to cover, really going to cover what's usually in that cost. Just the standard things that are going to appear no matter where you buy a home. And what everyone came here to see, down payment assistance programs. All right. Miss Angel, can you take it away? Yes, thank you, Langston. All right, so let's talk steps to home ownership. Um, one of the biggest steps is when you decide that you wanna purchase a home, the first thing you should do is hire an agent. Okay, well, of course I say hire an agent, I'm a real estate agent, but we say that because it will help you through the long run. So say it's a year or so that you decide you want to purchase a home, go ahead, connect with the agent then, and then they can help you through the path. Your agent is your cheerleader, okay? They will help. If you don't have a lender, they'll introduce you to a lender. If you need um, credit help, they can introduce you to credit specialists. Uh, when it comes time for home inspection, those different things. So your agent is your partner in the whole process and even once you're in your home. So our focus is to go ahead, hire that agent, connect with them then. And then maybe, I mean, you may go through a couple of agents because maybe the first agent didn't provide you with the education, the resources that you needed to be able to purchase your home. But then you come across one like me in Langston who go ahead and we provide that education and we provide those tools and resources. So I will always say, hire your agent as soon as you say, you know what, I think I want to buy a home. So then the next step is secure pre-approved financing. So I'm going to let Laddie talk about the difference between pre-approved financing and pre-qualified. We want pre-approved financing. So Laddie, could you tell us about the difference between pre-approved financing and pre-qualified? Just a little Hi. bit. Yes, absolutely. So a pre-qualification is basically goes by your, you know, um, what you say, what you can data entry into a file. So if you say, yes, I make this much money, you know, per month, hourly, this, these are my wages. My, I think my credit score is here and um, I have this much to put towards the purchase of the home as far as down payment funds. Um, so that's kind of just based off of a, you know, a scenario. But when you get pre-approved, um, that step, you'll talk to me, I'll get to know your background, I'll get to know a little bit more of your family's needs, their budgets, that way I know exactly what I need to look for from you. Um, documents to request to verify your income, verify and review your credit, all of your debts, and um, also make sure your assets um, also, what are, that are also known as savings that you have are all verified. And that way, when you are ready to actually start looking for a home, you know exactly what your purchase power is. Um, you know, the last thing you would want to do is go online, fill out an application, and not have your information verified because there are things that can come up during the process, you know, if you were off for a certain time off of employment. So the last thing we would want you to do is go out there with your agent on a pre-qualification and you put all this effort to find a home, you know, win a multiple bid situation, and then come to find out, well, you're not approved maybe for that much because 
we forgot to ask you about, you know, a, a second job or there was an issue with your income that couldn't get you qualified um, for the loan. So pre-approval is very important. It's a very important step for sure. Thank you, Letty. All right. So next step in home ownership and your steps to home ownership, we need to help you find a home. You've got the pre-approval letter. We know what your budget is. So we are going to help you find your home based on what you feel like is your needs and your wants. We try to focus on the needs. And if we can get some of those wants in there, um, then we'll go ahead and make sure that it's within your budget that we can do. Then next is we'll make an offer on your dream home that you've chosen and help negotiate as far as um, what are those other things? Now, right now there's a seller's market. So negotiating closing costs and things like that, closing credits and stuff, um, that is not happening a whole lot. But there are those opportunities, say it's something that's more of a fixer upper and the person knows and they just want to get it sold and maybe they don't have that many people interested in that property. There's those opportunities to figure out what we can negotiate into the contract. All right. So once we have an approved contract, all right, you and the seller agree on the pricing and the terms, we are going to schedule a home inspection. And of course, me and Langston can help you find a home inspector. We have a list of vendors that we work with. And so We'll get that home inspected so you know like what are the major things that really need to be done or if there is anything that really needs to be done we focus on having making sure like is the roof how old is the roof how new is the roof furnace um air conditioning unit you know hot water heater those types of things items like paint maybe a hole in the wall you know if it's not termites or anything just somebody punched the wall that might not be necessary to try to include in to have them fixed. You might be able to fix that yourself. It just kind of depends. And I just chose something crazy like that just because, all right? Uh, once we're done and we everything's cleared, you and the seller are still in agreement. You're going forward with the contract. You will finally have your closing day, all right? And so you'll close and be a homeowner. And that process is it's different now because of COVID. A lot of it is some part parts in person, some of it's over the phone, just kind of depends on where we're at in the state of things. But it is a wonderful thing because you will sign the paperwork, get your keys, and then you will plan to move into your new home, all right? So those are just an overview of the steps of home ownership, all right? So moving on, costs of buying a home. So there are various costs within buying a home. First, there's the earnest money. Um, that's kind of like your good faith estimate. So there's your good faith money saying, hey, you know what, I really want to purchase this home. And when you're making your offer and you're putting a certain amount down, so it can be as low as $500. It could be as high as 5% of the purchase price. Um, usually the 5% of the purchase price is more in new construction, new builds. Uh, the builder wants to know that you really have a lot of skin in the game and you want to go forward with that contract and build. Then there's also your down payment. And as of today, we're talking about down payment assistance programs. There's closing costs that consist of various different amounts, and that could be 2% to 3% of the loan. Uh, there's attorney fees, there's the city transfer tax in some areas, and it's home inspection costs, the survey, one year of homeowners insurance, and other miscellaneous fees. And then maybe, like I said, if there's some repairs or some things that need to be done, there's reserves for improvement and repairs that you may need to have. Now, all of this is not due at the same time as your agents. We are there to help you figure out when the amounts are due and what the amounts are, as well as your lender will help with those things as well. Letty would be one to help you figure out what is your amount that you need to bring to the table for closing costs. So Langston, Letty, do you have anything you would like to add to the cost of buying a home before we move on? Sorry about that, no. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely help you answer any questions. The, the cost of buying a home might, they might vary um, from like from county to city. Some villages have um, tax transfer fees. I know the city of Chicago charges um, a fee to transfer, um, you know, the, the transfer stance, sorry. So uh, yeah, it just depends. And we make sure that we line item all of those things out for you so you understand exactly what you're getting into, how much you need to put towards the purchase. And most of this stuff is negotiable. You know, it, there's no set in stone. It's not locked in. Talk to the vendors, talk to the people, talk to us. And, you know, this, this is our job. We can negotiate. We can see what we can. There's things that can't be negotiated. I'd say the city transfer tax is out of our control. You got a problem with that, go to your 
city, go to your local legislator. But beyond that, we can negotiate most things in a contract. Yes. And the cost associated with it. Yes. All right. So thank say you. there was a, a piece of furniture or utility that wasn't included if we wanted to add that to the sale, maybe, maybe you chip in an extra 500 to get a $4,000 fridge. Yes, that's possible. All right, thank you, Langston and Lally. All right, the IHDA Smart Buy. All right, so the Illinois Housing Development Authority has basically, they have different down payment assistance programs. So we cover some of those programs as well as others. And so, Letty, let's talk about this IHDA Smart Buy because it has some student loan relief that is really, really nice for those people that can take advantage of it. Yes, absolutely. This is probably the, I would say, the most benefit beneficial program that IHDA offers if you can get the full benefit. Um, and it's like sunshine is coming down over here. At me. I didn't need a ring light today. I just got the sun itself. Um, but yeah, so it's a really great program. Um, all of the IHDA programs, we also refer to it as Ida. I like to think of her as like Aunt Ida um, when I'm trying to help clients remember the name of this program. It's really great. Um, so they do offer a flat $5,000 in the down payment assistance. Um, and then they also offer up to 15% of student loan relief um, of the purchase price up to $40,000. Um, the only, I guess you could say catch to this would be that they will only give you up to $40,000 and you have to pay off your full, ba your full balances on that. Um, so it would have to be, you know, if you owe, for example, $60,000, you would have to come in with the difference. So $20,000 additionally the, at the closing. Um, and that can be received in the form of a gift. Uh, at the end of the day, you're still getting $40,000 in student loan relief. So it's a pretty great program. The only requirement is for you to live in the home for three years or 36 months, and it gets fully forgiven after that. Um, so of course, the minimum credit score for all of the IDA programs is 640. Um, your debt to income ratio, meaning how much your actual payment can be, um, that translates over to your purchase price qualification cannot exceed 45%. So your total debts, the minimum payments that report on your credit, plus your new debt of the monthly mortgage cannot exceed 45% of your gross income. Um, whereas other programs that are standard, such as like a standard FHA program with no down payment assistance, they can go up to 57% of your income. So kind of depends on your goals and your needs there. Um, and student loan requirements, what that means is that they cannot be private loans. Um, so it can, you know, Sally Mae and federal loans, um, definitely those qualify. Private loans meaning, uh, well, my mom gave me $20,000 to pay for my tuition last year. Can I pay her back with that? It's technically not, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so Ida is subject to income limits. Uh, it depends on how many per household. Um, for all of these programs, all of the, most of these down payment assistance programs, but definitely IDA, um, all of the borrowers have to occupy the home. So you guys all have to be, um, you know, living in the property. We can't have maybe like mom or dad helping to co-sign and qualify. Um, you know, all applicants must be living in the property. And um, purchase price limits, it depends on, on the property type. So you can buy a two unit building and the purchase price limit increases um, over $400,000. Um, but it, it depends, again, on the area. It would be something that case-by-case -case basis. And um, it's, that's why it's really important to talk to a lender, to a realtor, to get an idea of your background and your goals and to be able to put you in the best program that fits your needs. Um, and it also does require the last point there, the pre-purchase homeownership education. We can provide the link for those. There's a few out there. Really great programs are really, I really recommend taking that course even now after this, you know, start working on obtaining that certificate. It doesn't expire. You can use it for any um, program that you choose to get into, um, but it really helps you once you start the process, taking that education course kind of helps you piece everything together because you can, they do a really good job of explaining it, putting visuals when you take the online course that when you start the process and go 
through each milestone, you'll be able to kind of connect the dots. It'll help you like just kind of put everything together. Like, oh yeah, I knew this was going to happen. I know exactly what, you know, mortgage insurance is. It goes through all the details. That's so hard for us to go through in such a short time. Um, so I really recommend that. We'll send you the links for those as well. And don't forget guys, um, come up with a few questions. We just ask of you at least three questions. We'll go through them at the end, of course, but anything that you that comes up, um, more than happy to help you. And even if we run out of time, uh, we're, each one of us, and especially myself, will be able to um, give you more details on any specific questions that you have. Thank you, Letty. Smart buy. So next is Ida's Forgivable Program. Tell us about that. So this is an awesome program as well. Um, forgivable is just that. Uh, it will help you with up to 4% of the purchase price. And you have to live in the home for at least um, five years. Uh, so during the first five years, what it means by that being forgivable is it's kind of forgiven at a prorated basis. You know, so. If, you, you, if you decide to sell or refinance within those first five years, you're going to owe that prorated amount. So say you want to move out, you know, at year three or two and a half, let's say, you're going to owe Ida, uh, the Ida program, $3,000, um, you know, with your payoff or from your sale. Because the Ida program, just like many of these other programs, get recorded as a second lien on your property. Um, so to satisfy that lien when you're selling or refinancing, you have to make sure you pay them back or you met the minimum um, time requirement that you've been living in the home. Um, so same, same qualification details, um, 640 credit score. Um, keep in mind that the debt to income ratio is a little bit lower that might affect your purchase price um, that you, you know, it depends of course. So, um, that's really the gist of this one. So those, those funds at $6,000 is forgivable after five years. Right, forgivable after five years, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, the average person stays in their home maybe about, I think it's about seven, eight years. Seven mm -hmm. years. All right, so definitely. Okay, the next program. All right, let's talk about IDA Access Deferred. So this one right. sounds kind of just like, you know, how it sounds, deferred. So you think about deferred student loans, that means that you're kind of uh, saying, you know, you don't, you're not paying for them yet, but there will come a time that you have to start paying those student loans back. Um, so same idea, it just offers a little bit more in assistance, you know, up to the 7,500. Um, so with this program, um, whether you, you do sell sooner or later, whether you finish the whole term all of the payments on your home, um, you still have to pay this back. So um, again, another note I want to add about the IDA program. Um, best case scenario, the IDA program will help you cover all of your closing costs. Um, your awesome agents will help you negotiate awesome credits uh, from the seller to help with additional closing costs and down payment assistance. So the best case scenario with the IDA program is that you only come in with 1% of the purchase price. Um, so $200,000 house, we would require that minimum you contribute from your own funds at least $2,000, 1% of that purchase price. Um, we can use the appraisal fee for that, um, which varies from 400 to maybe $650, depending on the property type. Um, we can use the inspection fee for that. Um, another thing that qualifies is the earnest money. That's like the deposit that you put initially when you um, are under contract, when your offer is accepted by the seller. Um, and you can also receive a gift for that too, to help you cover that cost. So ideally $2,000 would be what the program requires from you um, to contribute to, towards a purchase. So that happens often, um, especially depending on the type of um, the year, you know, the, the time of the year that we close, if you get a, a much higher tax proration, that can really bring that down. And then if you invest those funds in the beginning, like if all of those um, fees are verified that you were able to contribute at the closing, you can receive up to $250 back. So um, a really, really great program. But again, to recap on the difference on this one, you do have to pay it back one way or another, whether it whether when you sell, refinance, or you know all the way at the end of your your thirty year term, and you you know you still have to satisfy that seventy five hundred dollars. All right, thank you, Letty. 
All right, now this Ida program, all right? Hold up. And it keeps moving. Ida Access Repayable. Could you expound on that one for us? Because that's yeah. a little different than the last one, it sounds like. Yes, of course. Yeah, so same qualifications. Um, the difference with this one is it offers up to $10,000. Um, so essentially, it's kind of like a um, non-interest mortgage, you could say. So they give you up to $10,000, but this you do pay back um, you know, on a monthly basis. You basically, uh, up, if it's up to the $10,000, you have to pay an additional $83 to the IDA program for um, being able to use that $10,000 down payment assistance, which is really great. Uh, we just have to keep in mind, we customize your mortgage plan according to your needs, you know, according to your, your income and how much you have available to put down towards the purchase. So sometimes, you know, an additional $83 um, might affect your purchase price. So it really depends. It's all about getting to know your goals again and your background and, um, you know, review your, your profile so that we can make sure we put you into the best case scenario. Um, the IDA programs, they have a set interest rate and they vary, you know, daily we get updates and usually they're a little bit higher um, than a standard program without down payment assistance. Um, so we keep that in mind too. It's, um, you know, it's, it's hard to give details without knowing all of uh, uh, applicants information because credit scores, you know, everything affects one thing or another. Um, so, but this is, this is a program. I just had a client um, choose this program for him to help with his um, down payment assistance um, costs because he wanted to do some upgrades to the property. So he was able to maximize, you know, his qualification using this program. He's coming in with the minimum needed required at the closing, and he's going to use those savings that he already had um, to do the upgrade that he wants on the home. So in this case, it really benefited him because it was, you know, a $10,000 um, assistance. So it was really great for him in that situation to get into that program. That is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That's a way to really make your money go far, y'all. That's <laughs> Ratchet. Right. Uh, I hadn't heard anyone use that like that before. Okay. All right. Next one. Could you tell us about the Rosebud Down Payment Assistance Program? Yes, absolutely. So I was reading some of the chats in here. Um, okay. So this, <laughs> no problem, we will get to all the questions in the chat. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So this program is great because um, it doesn't have an income limit requirement. Um, so it will help you with up to the minimum required um, three and a half percent. Um, the other difference between this one and the IDA program I mentioned is this one is only offered to government loans. So anything that any loan such as an FHA or a VA, you can definitely use this program. Um, the other difference here is that you can only use it for one unit property. So either a single family home or a condo or a town home. So you can use this for like a two flat building, you know, multi-unit buildings, things like that. Um, and there really isn't a, a it, it depends. There's a few things that you have to factor in um, for like under the, the qualifications. If you're looking at the, the maximum debt to income ratio, it's not capped at 45. It really depends on your actual credit score. So if you have a strong credit score, um, the program will let you kind of go a little bit higher, maybe up towards 50 percent, um, you know, 55 percent even of the of your income debt, debt to income ratio. Um, so it, it really you know, it's a great program. Again, if the issue is that you want the minimum, uh, you want to come in with the minimum to purchase the home, you know, uh, because you want to have funds available for other projects, other other things, you know, that you have in mind for your financial goals. Um, so this one really helps a lot to cover that minimum required three and a half percent. Um, and it depends on the purchase price and there's other uh, limits too, depending on the purchase price itself. But this program is beneficial if, say, you and your husband or, you know, you and your fiancé, the applicants that are applying make more than the required um, minimum yearly income, uh, you could definitely use this program. Very nice. All right. So moving on to the next program. 
All right, Langston, can you tell us about this program, the Community Partners for Affordable Housing? So this is a nice program. It's actually, <clears throat> it's exclusive to Lake County. So if we have anyone searching in Lake County, I suggest you definitely take advantage of this. It, you can get assistance up to 5% of the property and it's it's only for first time home buyers. Now they actually specify what they consider first time home buyers and that includes anybody that's been displaced. So say your house burned down or something like that. Uh, anyone who hasn't owned a home in the last three years and single parents that previously owned a home with their spouse. And it's a, it's a nice loan. It's similar to the access repayable, not the access repayable, the access forgivable, because after five years and 60 days, the loan is completely forgiven. So as long as you, oh, wow. so as long as you occupy the house for five years and 60 days, the loan's completely forgiven. You only have to put a thousand down or 1%, whichever's higher. And the maximum si the maximum pr home price, because this one actually has a maximum home price it can be used with, is a $242,000 house. Okay. And it has to remain your primary residence for the duration of that five years. But other than that, the interest is de deferred every month after your six first 60 days, the interest is subtracted off of the loan. So you're not paying it, it's just, because you're adhering to the terms of it, it's it's getting forgiven. It does require an FHA uh, FHA inspection, and it is it does restrict you to income of your combined income or income whoever's receiving the loan can't be greater than eighty percent of the median of that area. Okay. Right. Good information. Thank you, Langston. Another way to get some some money, kind of free, y'all. Kind of free. Kind of free, All and right. it's definitely favorable. <laughs> Look oh <my> nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Langston, can you talk about the Down Payment Plus federal? I home? sure can. <laughs> All right. The Down Payment Plus will give you up to a six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It pays out at a ratio of three to one. So okay. your contribution is tripled and what they will put in, but it caps out at $6,000. So if you, you, and the minimum is a thousand dollars, put a thousand dollars in, they'll put $3,000 in. You put, you know the math. So 2000, you get 6,000. Anything you put in after that is just whatever money you needed. It also caps out at 80% of the median rate. But this one's nice because it can be used in Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. Okay. That is nice. That gives you a lot of options. All right. Gives you a wider berth. Yes. <laughs> the berth. <laughs> All right, you guys. We have our Q&A part. And so if you have not asked questions, we will allow you to go ahead and either like ask them uh via come off uh come off your speaker come off a mute i'm sorry that's <laughs> i need a drink go ahead and get me some water my mouth's getting dry but i'm going to start through the ones in the chat okay so if you have anything you can still put it in the chat and like we this is anonymous you can just send it directly to me i'm just going to ask the questions and they as they come okay so what are some challenges for first-time home buyers all right so me lace and candle this one and then, I don't know, maybe Letty go over the maybe like financial aspect. I would say challenges that I've seen uh, with first time home buyers is identifying what is the purpose and your goal of buying a home, all right? Um, we know everyone is looking to be able to just buy their dream home, their forever home, or like some people want to do starter home, or some people want to get into real estate investing, but they want a house hack where they live in it first, um, go ahead and take advantage of any FHA down payment, anything they can at that level being owner occupied and then maybe later rent it out um, or after a year or whatever the time frame needs to be for whatever assistance they got um, and then move forward. So that's where I usually see that first time home buyers 
they don't identify exactly what they want to do. And so that kind of can hold you up because if you're looking to invest, but you're going to live in it first, well, you may want it to be able, you know, you're going to want it to be livable for you and comfortable for you. Right. But if you're trying to really make it an investment property, if you talk to a real investor that does this like on the regular, it might not need any of the amenities. You right? They're not concerned <laughs> a lot of time about some of those things that you may be like, Oh, I really don't like the way this kitchen is. Whereas investors like, look, if I can rent that sucker out for a good 1500 or more and make a cash flow of 500, that's all I care about. So um, it just really kind of depends on what that, what your goal is. And that's where I see where first time home buyers kind of get caught up in identify what exactly is a goal. So that's why we try to help you make sure like, what is your goal of why do you want to buy a home? Is this your starter home? So are you okay with maybe some of the rooms being a little smaller because this is just your starter home or are you okay with the commute time? You know, cause this is your starter home. Some of those things based on location, you know? Um, but that's what I usually see with uh, first time home buyers. Uh, Langston, you got something to add? I see. I see a lot, I see some hesitancy. I see some hesitancy to listen to what their loan officers are telling them, mm -hmm. certainly about not making certain types of purchases while mm -hmm. the process is going on. And also, you know, sometimes your eyes are bigger than your bigger than your wallet. You know, you, you want something, you want to find that deal, but this this isn't the market where you're gonna find deals. Where, where it's a steal, you know, mm -hmm. all, I would say most of n at least 90% of the realtors in our market are just as solid as we are. And most of these properties are priced correctly. They're priced correctly. You're not going to find something where it's like, oh, <laughs> they didn't know what they were looking at. So I'm, I'm going to scoop this up on a low, low. It's just, it's, it's not seen and bidding wars are real. Yes. that's very true all right letty yeah definitely Some of the, a lot of the challenges of so first-time home buyers a lot of them are very young or, or depends you know maybe um just starting to build their credit and um some of the challenges are that perhaps they are afraid that their credit score doesn't mean meet the minimum mm -hmm. requirement um, but the great news is, is that the sooner you get started on that pre-approval process, the sooner we can put you into a good plan, um, if that is a concern. Um, because, you know, as you build your credit, it takes time. The biggest factor um, that helps improve credit scores um, is definitely, um, you know, time, having a strong history. So that's one of the challenges that I would say. Maybe sometimes it's credit, but we have the tools, the simulators. Um, actually have a friend on here. His name is Eric Davis. Thanks for joining us. And he's a great contact to that to help um, for actual credit repair. So um, I'm glad he joined us today because um, he's another resource we can use. But there's a, there's a lot of information out there that we can help you get onto the right path. Um, and another challenge would be, you know, having the the required funds to put towards the purchase of the home. And that's where these programs come in to at least help you get that foot in the door. Um, and, you know, with the most minimum contribution from you that's needed as possible. And um, I mean, that's, that's the goal is to make you homeowners at the end of the day and expanding a little bit on what Langston said, um, you know, how sometimes there can be little bumps in the road where, you know, perhaps a, a buyer wasn't fully aware or fully correctly informed on, on the process and how to do things. And we work really well together. So we like to make sure everybody's full informed, getting updates, you know, that you're fully confident with the process and what's happening, what to do, you know, the do's and don'ts um, throughout the process so that we can get you closed the, as fast as possible and with the least resistance as possible um, throughout the process. So um, if there's anybody else that has any other questions of the things that we just touched on, you know, and you want to expand, feel free to jump in and, and ask away. All right. Thank you guys. Okay. So next question, are FHA loans good for first time home buyers? All right. Who wants to touch on this one? I'm sorry. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> are FHA loans good for first time home buyers? Absolutely. FHA loans are, um, I mean, the, the whole idea of an FHA loan is to have an affordable loan product out there to help 
clients get into their home, you know, families get into the home. Um, the main difference between an FHA, well, there's a few differences, but FHA loans are regulated by the government and they're pretty standard with their requirements. They're black and white. As long as your, you know, your debt to income ratio doesn't exceed this percent, which is 57 um, or 56.99. Um, and as long as your credit score is above 600, um, and as long as you have the minimum three, three and a half percent to put towards a purchase, I mean, for the most part, you're approved. You know, it's, it's easy to go through that process. It's very black and white. Um, whereas with a conventional loan, these those products, those types of loans require um, a very strong credit score, strong down payment, um, additional reserves saved up after your closing costs to cover at least two to six months of mortgage payments. Um, so your income also has to be very strong. You can't be really like maxing out your budget on there. So if all of those things, it's compensating factors. So maybe you do have a strong credit score, but you're only putting the minimum down payment required, not the full 20%, sorry. Um, then that might be, you know, it might be an issue. It might um, create a uh, higher interest rate and increase your payment. So it's kind of like an algorithm, you know, it, it follows different rules and there's compensating factors. So, you know, you could just say, just, just to put it out there, um, the, the perfect, and there's no perfect, everything is case by case, but you know, the top tier applicant would have at least 20% down plus an additional six months in reserves to cover more payments. They would have a 740 score and above, um, and they would also have really strong income where they're not going over, you know, say 45% of their uh, debt to income ratio on their budget. So, you know, that's that's definitely not for everyone. You know, not everyone can get there, but the it's idea not for the economy FHA, we live in. Yeah, the, the idea for FHA, the reason it's there is to help people get their foot in the door, start investing, start building, you know, generational wealth for their families. You know, your your home is not a, a debt. You know, you don't want to look at it like, oh my gosh, you don't want to jump into this debt for, for a while. It's really a tool. It's an investment. It's an asset that you can use to, um, you know, because life happens. Say, you know, you, you purchase your home now. In five years, your family has grown. You need to go into, get into a new home. You can sell your home and use those profits to purchase your new home, um, and then you can get into a conventional loan where you know you're you're in the the best setting to purchase conventionally, and you're saving more money on that type of loan. So um, that's really the idea for FHA. You know, it gets your foot in the door and you start building from there. Thank you, Letty. All right. So what you're saying is the conventional loan is kind of like an entry level job where you need three years of experience. Yeah, right. <laughs> Exactly. And yeah. we're, we're talking with first time buyers here, you know, so not everyone is going to have an 800 credit score. Not everyone is going to have, you know, a ton of money in the bank that they've been I mean, saving. I'm sure we all wish we did. Yeah, of course, of course. But it's, you know, um, it's, it's just a matter of your family's goals at the end of the day. You know, we want to get you that home, that security. And that's why these products are here and they're amazing. Um, and you just need someone like me and like Langston and Angel to to help you communicate the different options that you have and, um, you know, get you started. Yes. All right, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, the only way I can get approved for first time home buyers program is if I meet the qualifications for the student loans or I guess I'm a little confused about that part. Mm -hmm. So that one, what came up during the IDA smart buy and that is actually, I'll let you expound on it, but, um, that's not the case. You can, for the first time home buyers program, it's only the IDA smart buy one that provides the student loan relief. So you don't have to have a, or meet the student loan qualification requirements for any of the other ones. You just have to meet all those other uh, requirements. Um, so that's only that specific one because it gives the student loan relief that you would need to meet the student loan require, uh, student loan qualification requirements, okay? Uh, but Letty, did you want to kind of like maybe go through that or like expound on that a little more? Yeah, absolutely. So again, it's case by case basis. We have to review, um, you know, your budget, your income and things like that to make sure you meet those minimum requirements. Um, but really, in this case, it benefits you if you have um, 
maximum $40,000 in student loan debt. You can have a little more, so you have $42,000 in student loan debt and you're making your purchase. Um, you know, you can, you would just have to come in with the additional $2,000 at the closing. Um, the other $40,000 is going to be paid off the day of your closing. Um, so it really goes case by case when um, the benefit of that program too is that we don't have to, we can exclude the student loan debt from your application. So um, in, a, in a different setting, if we're not using that student loan relief program, even if your payments are deferred, we have to hold like a hypothetical payment on your application to contribute towards your total debts. Um, you know, for example, um, the there's a there's a program that like for example the FHA program, um, we have to hold one percent of your balances on your student loan as a debt, and you know, kind of hit you for that. So um, people who might have more than you know a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt. We can also use what's called um, the income-based repayment program that you're on. Um, but either way, the idea is for the bank that eventually you are going to, if you, you, although your payments are deferred on the student loans, eventually during the 30-year term of your mortgage, you're going to have to start paying them back. So we're going to have to essentially hypothetically hold, you know, 1% payment of those balances on your application, which might reduce your qualification, you know, and your purchase price amount that you're maybe shooting for. Um, so it's all, again, case by case basis. We're going to review everything in detail. Right. Uh, next question. What if my husband has a VA loan? How does the down payment assistance work? Or should we have a down payment if not required? The VA loan is amazing. Um, definitely get with me on that if your husband is a, a veteran because um, it's essentially 100% financing. So um, it could be that you can even receive money back at the closing. So case by case basis, you know, a few things apply. Every property is different, every buyer is different. Um, but essentially, you, it probably would not benefit you to use a down payment assistance program if you're choosing the VA program. Um, you know, so again, case by case basis, but that's really a VA is a great loan. Um, probably the best one out there in the market that you can get into um, because it offers a lot of benefits for the veterans. Um, so, so yeah, no, not necessarily. You wouldn't have to combine the VA loan with um, the down payment assistance loan. All right. Thank you, Letty. Okay, so next question. Can multiple programs be used at the same time? Typically, no. Typically, we don't. Um, it, it's, it's not allowed to use those, pro, you know, multiple programs at the same time because you have to meet minimum investment requirements. So if you're um, using the max benefit of these programs and, you know, essentially you're getting money back, they, they put a cap to everything. Um, so unfortunately, you know, some of these programs you cannot use at the same time. All right. And where can we find information on the medium income for each area? So for the IDA program, we can give you the website as well. And I believe it's idamortgages.org, um, but we can send you the link on there. And uh, it has like the full details, the matrix, the requirements. It has side-by-side -side -side comparisons of the different programs with IDA. Again, it's with the, the IDA program is with the state of Illinois. Um, so you can definitely compare them there and see the requirements. Um, they, they actually have a map as well that you can kind of type in an address that you're interested in and you can get more details on it from there. Yes. Or you can reach out to us and we can help you find it, okay? <laughs> That's what we do. Definitely. Um, okay, so next question. What areas do you serve? I'm currently in Chicago South Suburb area. So where me and Links are all in Chicago South Suburbs. Um, South, <laughs> Southwest. Uh, I do city Chicago proper and uh, north. I actually do work in Lake County. South Suburbs as well. Down to Kankakee. Yes. All right. And I'm South Suburbs, uh, I'm West Suburbs, I'm Suburbs. Yes. Sometimes I go into the city, but I'm not from the area. So I usually need like directions <laughs> a lot more. And I'm so used to being in the suburbs. I've always worked in the suburbs since I've been up this way. So 
All right, Letty, what areas do you cover? Cover everywhere, every area. I'm, <laughs> in, uh, I'm in the city now in our Bucktown um, office, but you know we can definitely do things like this remote, um, and we can also meet in meet in person. I have, like I said, a um, north of the city office, and there's also a south side office that we have near Midway, and we have an office located in Downers Grove. Um, so you know the, these are big steps. It's a big investment. And I'm all about taking my time with ta talking to, especially new first time home buyers, um, to explain everything because there's a lot of information. We don't expect you to know every single thing, um, but of course we're here for that guidance to help you, um, you know, understand the process and uh, be really comfortable with your decision. So um, yeah, it's really, for me, it's, it's a more remote, you know, I can meet you anywhere kind of thing, but um, it definitely we service all areas pretty much. Thank you, Letty and Langston. Next question is, do we still need to have the actual cash to use these programs? Uh, and you kind of went through that. So yes, this <laughs> already, it can be, and you explain, Letty explain how this, the money for the programs, like your earnest money can count towards the pr amounts needed. Um, so if we can maybe and, and we can see, it, it's yeah again it's case by case if you have a family member that's um going to gift you the funds you know they can gift you the equity i'm sorry the earnest money down payment and um we technically wouldn't have to verify any funds from you and if that were the case if the if the earnest money covers the minimum required investment um so it's case by case basis sometimes there's exceptions to that um, you know, the underwriter who is technically like the quality control reviewer of your file, just to make sure that everything is in guidelines, you know, according to the mortgage requirements, everything's in place. So case by case basis, but um, with the IDA program, I mean, if it's structured correctly, it could be that we don't even need to see your bank statements as long as, um, you know, the minimum required investment is covered. So there, there's, there's ways to, you know, strategize everything um but technically i mean technically no if you have a gift for example from from a family member and we can document that verify it um then you know we can definitely move forward that way all right thank you next question is if i wanted to go in on a property with a friend 50 50 we are both first time home homeowners do we both lose our first time homeowner status so the IDA program is not only limited to first-time home buyers. The programs you can have up to two homes um, with the with the IDA program. Um, so, I mean, I, well, technically, I, I guess I understand the question now. Um, no, because technically you're going to be occupying the new home. So again, it kind of depends on case by case basis. Um, but for sure, whenever you're using the IDA program, all of the applicants have to occupy the home. And the other aspect about that is I'll say that first time homeowner, if you haven't bought like the one program, if you hadn't bought a home in like the last, what, three or five years, it's three years. the way it was set up, you're still, for some of the programs, you're considered a first time homeowner. So some of those programs, it could be seven years, it could be 10 years, um, I've seen, where they'll allow you to take on that status of first time homeowner. You would just have to meet their requirements and their qualifications um, and go through their process as far as any home ownership education and stuff. So there are those opportunities. That's why it's best to talk to someone early to see what your options are. Right. And it does appear that there are quite a few loopholes to gain first time status, even if you have owned a home in the past. <clears throat> All right, next, I have two more questions, you guys. All right, so what if you are in school while the loans are deferred? So that's perfectly fine as long as um, you can attest, basically, we, one of the requirements when you're doing the Smart Buy program is um, for you to provide an explanation, a statement that you do not have any other pending loans, you know, that you've applied for in the future or anything like that. Um, because then we would have to make sure we're taking those into account. Um, but yeah, definitely you can still use the program while you're in school. Okay, good to know. And how does it work with a co-signer? 
So, so yeah, so for the, for, as far as I know, for the IDA program, definitely um, we can't allow, it doesn't allow a non-occupying uh, applicant to co-sign, you know, to get, get the qualification. Um, so technically uh, no co-signers would be, you know, eligible. We wouldn't be able to approve um, going that route because they would have to state that they're living in the home as well. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so that is all of the questions from the chat. Does anyone have any more questions before we move on? I don't see anything else. Okay. All right, so we do, Lanks and I do monthly seminars. So next month is uh, Achieve Our Year Goal of Home Ownership. And we go more in depth with the steps of home ownership. And then we have these other ones coming up. They are subject to change because um, I'm thinking we need to add in another down payment assistance program one um, <laughs> just to give more people the opportunity to learn about it um, as well as any other items, items that may come up. So in the coming months, you may receive um, another invite to another home ownership seminar. It could be Letty as our lender or another lender or a credit specialist. Um, we try to work with um, a group of people so that we get to be able to match up our clients to people based on their personalities. Some people like to like, Letty explains thoroughly. And so it helps. And she gives you great examples where some people like those people that, you know, they really, they just, they're kind of direct and short and succinct. Say they're really kind of direct. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, what's my payment? How much do you That's need? Right. They leave it. <laughs> yeah. Big bang, so. boom. <laughs> right. <laughs> so just kind of yeah. depends on what you're interested in and what you need. So these are our next uh, home ownership seminars coming up in the coming months. We want to thank everyone for their time. If you have any questions, you do have our email addresses. Uh, we will reach out with a follow-up, so uh, just please let us know, and you will receive an email uh, with a survey, and let us provide us with some feedback so we know if we're providing you with the resources you need. Um, if you have anything else, um, any other interests, you can let us know in that survey as well, okay? So thank you all for your time, okay, and take care. And I always say I'm going to add music, but hey. I, I right. never... Everyone have a great evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never do. Oh my goodness. Feel free to reach out. Don't be strangers. We'll probably call you too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. All right. I need out. Wow, seven o'clock exactly. Hold on. Hour. Hold on. Hold on. Recording. <laughs>